Trying to like collaborate with another producer? Or artist or... Me? I mean, people probably call me an asshole, but I never collaborate with another producer unless it's like my family or whatever because it's conflict of interest. Like, you got producers these days the time be like, oh, space speedy, I make beats. I say, yeah, I make them too. He's like, oh, yeah, you know, man, my bad, I produce. Yeah, I produce too. But they don't have the means or the outlets to get their production uh, beats to the right people. So what they do is ask me, can you hook me up with this person? Well, I'm trying to do the same thing. So that's a conflict of interest off the gate. Now, as an artist and a producer together, that's not that's that's a perfect marriage. He does, he or she uh, sings or rap, and I produce. Together, we make a song. So another rapper can't get with another rapper and expect to make something happen. So that's why a lot of people get the uh, stereotype and don't don't understand the game. You got to put the right mixture together to you know what I'm saying to make that perfect record. So when I got with Organized Noise, I was actually quiet, sent back learning because they was teaching me how to do it. And then I went on my own making these beat CDs and giving Timo, which is an artist, Gil, which is an artist. Like I wasn't going to Organized Noise to say, help me shop my beats and get me some placements. They doing the same thing. They gonna shop their beats and get their placements before they do mine. Unless I'm willing to give them, give them all my publishing. And that's business. That's that's life. I don't, I don't care how much homeboys and how much business. That's that is it, what it is. You gonna give me half of this beat? I get co-producer on this thing, but I would give you co-producer anyway because that's the kind of person I am. When you talk, when you bring me into something, that's. But they weren't showing me that. They were showing me, look, get you to the next level where you can do your own thing. They always, you know, one thing they always did was put me around the uh, L.A. Reeds and all the people. They put me in a room with these folks, with me being quiet. But as you can't believe, I, was, I just be quiet as hell back then. Listen, that I learned quick. Cause they put me in the situation where, hey, LA Reed, this DJ Speedy, DJ Speedy, LA Reed, and walk off. If I don't say nothing else, if I don't say, yo, I made beats, woo woo, hey, put me, what up, what's gonna happen? Nothing. So I, the only thing he could do, and they taught me this, the only thing they can say is yes or no. It's yes or no. What's an average day look like for you? Whew. Now? Yeah, what that little bird said. Oh man, my day's crazy. My day's crazy because I have an op operation to run and an operation to run. You know, I, I, like I'm, I'm a one man band. I mean, till I met, you know, till I met Dre and you know certain people that came in that helped me. I, I, I never had a manager. I never had a manager, publicist, none of that. It was just always me. Get up in the daytime, make a bunch of tracks. Get on the phones, try to talk to the labels and stuff, and then at nighttime in the streets, script clubs, being speedy. Let's talk about that because a lot of up and coming producers think that they need a manager. When do you think a producer needs a manager? How's somebody going to manage something that's, that's, that's not able to be managed? A manager makes money off of getting you placements or getting you in situations that make a percentage off of you. But if you don't have nothing for that manager to manage, what do you need a manager for? You gotta, you gotta do some things on your own, and then a manager steps in and be able to manage what you already created, and then take it to the next level. Especially because, it could, I mean, okay. No, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Because, because you know, you know, the famous line is, "You only, you only, you only as good as your last hit." So the first thing, if a manager comes in and say, "If I want, I'm just Harvey Miller," and you say Dre say, "I want to manage you," I believe in you, okay. But when he goes to somebody and says, Oh, I got this dope producer, Harvey, DJ Speedy, whatever. What they're gonna ask him is, what has he done? Oh, uh, we're trying to give him something. So now he has to put himself in the same shoes I was in to get him to manage me. Hey man, I'm dope. Then it goes to that his his folk and say, hey, I believe in him. He got some dope stuff. And, and they gotta take a shot, and then they gotta take a shot with their folk, and it, it just got a trickle down effect. So if I'm if I'm going out and I'm hustling and I'm working and I'm and, and, and I'll meet him halfway, he really got something. Well, hey, he dope as hell. He ain't got no major placement, but he did X, Y, Z with so and so and so, and somebody might he got potential placement with this and that and the third. Like he did something, so he can he can manage something. So that's I mean that's what that's that's when the manager comes into play. Yeah, I mean. Yeah.